on behalf of God to represent his interests in the earth. And for, for, for those who are listening, when we say the ruler in the earth, we're not talking about the third planet from the sun. The ruler in the earth is the God consciousness right. that's in this biology right. that we know as a piece of earth. So in a sense, this is the real savior. Right. I think that's uh, important to highlight because this was the very first broadcast Imam Muhammad gave on a national level. He, he, the first radio broadcast he gave to the nation was just this subject. Uh, God's Khalifa in the earth. And uh, it's, it's, it's taken from the Holy Quran, uh, Surah 2, um, verse 30, Ayah 30. Okay. So what do you say to those who still wouldn't um, believe or accept or acknowledge the significance of Savior's Day? What do I say to those who still acknowledge it? Who, will, who won't. Who will not? Yes, sir. Who don't because of, for whatever reason. Okay, well, everybody's entitled to his own uh, understanding, his own belief. And I would say, if you don't acknowledge it, it's because of what you understand. And if you do acknowledge it, it's because of what you understand. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good way to put it, because that really leaves it at the doorstep of those who are believers or who are not. Now, I know you and Day being another of um, major holidays that's recognized, like an actual, what we literally call um, a calendar holiday, mm -hmm. to having that established. I don't think it should be established, and I would say that's probably the biggest obstacle. I don't think, uh, I think the fact that it is in February, it's February the 26th, it is in Black History Month, I think it should be acknowledged for the benefit of the history of the descendants of the freed slaves coming away from the effects of slavery. Um, I like to use the analogy of when the slaves were emancipated by Abraham Lincoln and uh, those who had rebelled against the Union went back to their land. They had to tell the slaves, I'm no longer your master. Right. Leave. And most of the time when somebody experiences something as traumatic as the dehumanization of what was put on us as a people, you would give them some kind of debrief or a restoration or an insight to 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 come back into the human family. Right. We were not. Right. We did not give that. We were just told, get off my land. Right. And for that reason, I think we as a people need to restore the lost qualities of our human potential that were uh, put on us as a result of slavery. And how might Savior Day help to do that? Because it, it, it really, um, I'm gonna say, highlights the Khalifa or the human potential. The human potential or the Khalifa is known as Adam. That, that's also in that same surah. When, I, when, when Allah says, I'm going to make a caliph in the earth, he named him Adam. And, and whenever we talk about Adam, we're talking about Adam and Eve. And we really are talking about the human potential in its masculine and its feminine aspect. Right. So the fact that the slaves were put off the plantation, they had already established that they were only three-fifths human, and uh, they have something in the United States history better known as the Great Compromise, where they allowed the master to cast three-fifths of a vote for every slave that he owned. Right. Well, the other two-fifths of that humanity needs to be restored. When Adam was created, he was the most perfect creature ever to be created by the Creator. Most people say if he was so perfect, why did he eat from the tree? Right. <laughs> and 
And I think that's a good question. Right. That was <laughs> how, I, I would have blessed you. Okay, said you can ask me. I would have said that if you were so perfect, yes. then how do you explain that imperfection I will. for that son? It was really was not an imperfection. He was created perfect with the understanding that he should eat from the tree because he was it was his it was the making of his potential in paradise the real adam was not made until he was placed in the earth once he was placed in the earth begin to fact lost qualities um i'm going to say experience in paradise as a result of eating loss was obedience and faith it was in so once he was placed in the earth, now he wants to restore right. his lost qualities. That was not a mistake. That was by design. Right. The Creator said, I'm going to make a Khalifa in the earth, not in paradise. In order for the Khalifa to come to the earth, yeah, it had to be. get yeah. its qualifications by being yeah. disobedient. Right. Once the disobedience kicked in, it also awakened a conscious effort in Adam to restore what was lost. And I have to say this, because I felt like I experienced it when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad passed. When he passed, I felt like I was in the potential of trying to be one of his followers. Okay. <laughs> but once he passed, I realized the job is not done. We still have to deliver consciously, make an effort to get it done. And I'm going to say that was, what, almost, it was 39 years ago. Right. I'm still trying to do it. The mere fact that I'm talking in this broadcast is an effort right. to try to reach our people to get acquainted with the knowledge of themselves and restore the lost qualities that we experience in paradise. No doubt. Hmm. Well, well, as far as now, we're just let's move ahead. We're going to roll up to the ideas of um, Savior's Day with respect to um, the younger generations. What would you say that Savior's Day means to the millennial um, American Muslim? Millennial? That's like what age group? That's like you. Is, um, I'm going to say intentionally. Um, um, have a band like anything, especially with reference to Louis Farrakhan, who's the one who's um, doing the most in the way of a, a gathering now. Mm -hmm. they don't, they, and they did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the same way. So the, the, the only way to see it is to demonstrate progressive action as the parent generation. And um, we need more of the, my peers in the parent generation right. so we can share more. Well, I, I say this because I just thought it was an interesting fact that you brought up very early in our conversation when you referred to um, Independence Day, the 4th of July, and Master Farad Muhammad had as that being his coming. Yes. And so in that respect, the 4th of July is recognized but for a different to our, to our um, audience. Yes, I think that's that's excellent. Did you remember that? And um, <laughs> I, we didn't always celebrate the Fourth of July under the honor of Elijah Muhammad. Imam Muhammad, when he became our leader, he's the one who recognized that as uh, the day of of, of independence. Because when Master Farah Muhammad said he came to North America, July the fourth, nineteen thirty, and so. He actually come to represent the independence of our human potential. And when he began to teach the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and those who followed him at that time, this is I'm going to, of what that represents. So in the, the fact that the 4th of July is Independence Day to the United States of America that the Founding Fathers signed to relieve themselves of the influence of George, King George and uh, 
they relieve themselves of the influence of being taxed without being represented. They relieve themselves of the influence of having someone else make the laws for them and they did not make the laws for themselves. We, as descendants of the freed slaves, need the same independence. Right. We actually need to learn to come together to do something for ourselves. I'm not saying go against the Constitution. We built America. But we can do something for ourselves within the framework of what the American laws actually say. Any other ethnic group can come to America and grow, congregate, the Chinese, it doesn't matter, uh, Mexicans, they all come and do something for themselves as a people, right. as a community. What we have to do is recognize our independence. The real reign, so to speak, of England and King. It's pretty ironic that the very same things that those people sought um, independence from, then they turned around and imposed on another whole Correct. population of people. Which, which to me highlights that they, uh, they are not Khalifa in their thinking. In their thinking. Right. They actually are white in their thinking. And as we to be black is to absorb the light. Right. And to be white is to reject the light. So if the only light that you can absorb in your mind is the light of God. So if you absorb the light of God in your mind, that will make you where we can do unjust to others, where we just, I'm going to say, exist for what we can get out of them in the sense that they actually made. Right. There's no faith, there's no righteousness in that type of conscience. You're right. And I just want to encourage our listeners and viewers, if you want a more detailed understanding of that whole distinction between black and white, I want to encourage you to revisit our first interview that I believe was February 17th. Yes. When we spoke about, um, for that was black history. Actually, it was you explaining how your history was intertwined into the whole thing of black history right. and sharing a lot of knowledge that a lot of people didn't um, know. I'm, mm -hmm. still, I'm still reeling over the whole idea, and I love the whole idea of you saying that about uh, Muhammad Ali being... Um, <laughs> a champion of the people, yes. but for a very different reason for than him being in the ring. So I'd like to encourage you all to revisit that broadcast and um, also share this one. And our time is winding down, but I do still have a few more questions that I'd like to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest being, um, having shared all this information about Savior's Day, what is your hope for the future of Savior's Day? I would like that um, we can get back to the spirit of celebrating like we did as one community. And I'm going to say this is going to be 